The next thing that we'd like to understand are chain lengths or molecular weights in free radical polymerization. And ideally, we'd like to connect those with the kinetics of the process, because if we can do that, then that will tell us how the parameters associated with the polymerization rate can be adjusted to also produce products that have desired chain lengths or molecular weights. And the first step to do that is to define a degree of polymerization. So a number average degree of polymerization, remember, is just a ratio of the number of monomers to the number of polymers, or the average number of monomers that are incorporated in each polymer molecule. Now I'm going to rearrange this a little bit in terms of quantities that connect better with the kinetic analysis that we've already done. So the number of monomers that's in the numerator, I'm going to express that as monomer units consumed per initiating radical. And the number of polymers in the denominator, I'm going to express as polymer molecules produced per initiating radical. So I've taken these quantities and expressed them in a per initiating radical basis. And I'm expressing them in terms of consumption and production to connect with our kinetic model. Now this term in the numerator, I'm going to abbreviate using this shorthand Greek letter nu. And then I'm going to invert the term in the denominator and multiply by it. So what I end up with then is the expression for my number average degree of polymerization is nu times the number of initiating radicals per polymer molecule. Okay, now that I've done this, let's take a closer look at this prefactor, this term nu. Notice that this is the monomer units consumed per initiating radical. So I can rewrite this in terms of a ratio of the rate of propagation to the rate of initiation. So the rate of propagation, I know, is the propagation rate constant times the monomer concentration times the concentration of active chains uh, in the system. The initiation rate, I'm going to write in terms of the termination rate by using the steady state approximation, which says that the initiation and termination rates are the same. Uh, growing chains are being produced at the same rate that they're being uh, converted to dead chains. So this is two times the overall termination rate constant times the number of active chains or the quantity of active chains squared. So I end up with this equation when I simplify. And now I know an expression for the concentration uh, of active chains. I got this when we did our kinetic analysis and imposed the steady state approximation. That actually was a key to allowing us to obtain an expression for this term. So when I substitute in for this term and simplify, I get the following expression for nu uh, in terms of the polymerization, dissociation, and termination rate constants, and the monomer and initiator concentration. So now that I have an expression for this term nu, we can go back and obtain an expression for the degree of polymerization. So we have this term, number of initiating radicals per polymer molecules produced. So we need to find an expression for this part of the term. Notice that if we have disproportionation termination, each initiating radical leads to one dead polymer because uh, every growing chain is terminated uh, to produce a dead chain. So in that case, this ratio is one. So our degree of polymerization for disproportionation termination is equal to this parameter nu. Now, if we have combination termination, it's a little bit different because remember, we have two active chains that combine to form one dead chain. So in other words, two initiating radicals had to be involved in producing those two active chains, but they only resulted in one dead polymer. So this ratio of initiating radicals per polymer then is equal to two. So therefore, if we have combination termination, the number average degree of polymerization is equal to two times this parameter nu. Now, again, in general, uh, both of these processes are uh, active. Uh, so we can come up with a overall expression, two times alpha times nu, where alpha is a parameter that expresses the relative uh, amount or relative uh, predominance of combination versus disproportionation. So in other words, if alpha has a value of a half, uh, we have 100% disproportionation. 
And if alpha has a value of one, then we have a 100% combination termination.